Hey guys, welcome, my name is Lazar, and today I want to give you a few tips and tricks regarding the most powerful and the most popular Warframes in, well, Warframe. First thing I want to say, this will be a more of a new player oriented thing, but I also got a couple of things which will be useful to veterans as well. So if you are a vet, why not take a trip down memory lane with yours truly. That said, lesson number one. Back when I started Warframe in 2017-2018, the most powerful Warframes then are definitely not the most powerful Warframes now. For example, the most powerful AoE frame back then was Ember. She was absolutely amazing alongside Equinox. Now Equinox today is still one hard hitting AoE frame and I do recommend you pick up Equinox Prime. But Ember unfortunately was nerfed to the ground, then she got a rework but she's still not super powerful. Don't get me wrong, she can still pack a punch. That said, let's start at the beginning. When you start Warframe, you get a choice of three. You can either go Excalibur, Mag or Volt. Excalibur is the poster boy of Warframe and it's the frame I usually encourage new players to pick up. Back when I started, I asked my friends, hey, which is the melee guy? I used to play melee in MOBA games, so I said, hey, I want to play a melee so I can get accustomed to Warframe a bit better. And that was Excalibur. Now Excalibur is definitely a very powerful and fun frame because you can make him into an absolute king when it comes to whooshing and swishing and by that I mean pulling out your blade, your 4 ability and just killing everybody around you. Now I'm also gonna suggest a couple of builds, keep in mind this is not a build guide, we're not gonna go in depth into this, definitely not, but this is an idea of a more of a high level build for Excalibur. Umbra version. When you start out, you will not get the Umbra version, you will get the normal version. Later down the line, you will get Umbra, but I can't spoil any more than this. Now my friends, this is a basic build. Replace the Prime mods and the Umbra mods with normal mods, and this build will help you whoosh and swoosh through enemies like nobody's business. So if you want to go for something a bit more meaty, then definitely go for Excalibur. The next frame I want to talk about is Mag. Now Mag is an amazing frame. Honestly, I love Mag. Initially, I wasn't really much of a fan when it comes to Mag, but later down the line, I saw her potential and I saw what she's capable of. Absolutely glorious utility and AoE destruction when it comes to Corpus. Because you see, sometimes in Warframe, not sometimes, almost all the time, you're gonna need the right tool for the right job because the honest truth is that there is no one the most powerful Warframe. There never has been, not really. It really depends on your point of view. The most powerful support frame, the fastest frame, the hardest hitting melee frame, maybe the hardest hitting range weapon frame. It really depends on what you wanna do. So again, Warframe has basically a little bit for everybody. You will find your favorite frame, but like I said at the beginning, <laughs> make sure not to get too attached to them pixels, my friends. Mag is not a frame that, from my point of view, should be available to new players. She's a bit too complex for that. That's just my two cents, and of course, Mag mains are gonna jump on my head and say, hey, she's not that complicated, not for you, but for a new player, it might seem a little bit overwhelming. So I would leave Mag alone. Let's talk about Volt. Volt is a absolutely sensational Warframe. I love my Volt. Now, currently in Warframe, the primary use for Volt is doing Eidolon hunting. And Eidolon hunting is an activity when we take out big bosses so we can get some fat loots. Now, those fat loots, without breaking anything of the lore and not breaking too much of the story, so I'm not gonna spoil anything for you guys, nothing big that is, are these power-ups. For example, Arcane Energize, this little thing, this Arf, uh, five right here is 1000 plat and I know that might seem like a lot if you're a newer player starting in Warframe But it used to be like four five thousand plat an R free, but that's a story for another time Volt is an essential tool when you're going idle on hunting so you can get these absolutely crucial and they are crucial power-ups Now don't get me wrong it really depends on what you want to do in Warframe because you're not forced into anything. You can essentially play the game your own way. Volt can be used in a number of different ways. You can use Volt to go really super fast, which is amazing. But there's another frame that can do that slightly better, at least better from my humble point of view. You can use Volt as an AoE destruction frame. He's gonna let loose electricity throughout the entire map and just and nuke everybody. One problem with a build such as that, allow me to showcase an example of such a build, something like this. 
The problem is, my friends, it consumes energy like nobody's business. There is a solution for that. For that, you can drop energy pizza. But again, this is not something that a newer player would be doing. And of course, as I said before, Volt is the essential killer in Eidolon hunts. But it wasn't always the case. Back in the day, the essential killer was actually Chroma. Now, Chroma and Warframe, this thing, is supposed to be the Dragon Warframe. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of Dragon in him. He can do a whole lot of weapon damage, definitely. And he's got a truck ton of survivability. Unfortunately, that's about all he can do. He is a fantastic frame, don't get me wrong, but I wouldn't call him necessarily the most ideal new player uh, frame or the most interactive frame. Let me put it to you like that. So we talked about the starter frames. Again, I recommend you either go for Excalibur or Volt. Leave Mac a tad later, but your first frame that I recommend you go out and farm by yourself or you can even go public and trust me, usually veterans in Warframe are kind usually okay usually don't shoot me are kind to newer players and we do try to help each other out as much as we can you gotta go for this frame right here he's a staple of warframe and if you know what if excalibur wasn't the poster boy of warframe then rhino definitely would be this is base rhino and rhino is what i like to call the Warframe that gets it done. He's got a lot of survivability through his second ability. He's got crowd control with his four ability stomp. He's got AOE, area of effect, buff through the use of his free ability and his one ability. Well, his one ability is not necessarily his best ability, his Rhino Charge. But you know what? There are builds that focus on Rhino Charge and you can traverse open fields such as the Plains of Eidolon in a couple of charges believe it or not you can even do that that's the degree of freedom you have in warframe now this degree of freedom kind of gets smushed somehow or condensed when you're doing cookie cutter things like i mentioned eidolon hunting or for example let's say you want to test your metal you're done with being a new player you're all buff and stuff now because you got a couple of warframes a couple of weapons you know how to mod them you got the whole game working for you and you want to try to test your metal against really tough opponents or perhaps boss fights or dungeons now unfortunately my friends in warframe we don't really have boss fights we don't really have dungeons even though we have been asking for this i think for years we have been asking for an end game per se but there are some players that practice the following you can do endurance runs and in endurance runs you go into endless missions endless missions are survivals or defenses and you stay a lot of time steel path mode more on that some other time until you meet super high level enemies where each and every single enemy will kind of become like a mini boss of sorts believe it or not you can meet level 4000 5000 6000 enemies it's absolutely crazy now don't get me wrong my friends the difficulty the perceived difficulty of these enemies is mm -mm, for the most part simply because it really depends on what your definition of difficulty is and because of the scaling of health and armor in Warframe, they're not uh, ultra more difficult than something like a level 200, 300. So do bear that one in mind. If that's the kind of thing you're interested in, then may I suggest Gara or Gara Prime. Now Gara is an absolutely outstanding Warframe. She's got one problem and one problem only. Her gameplay gets a little bit stale. It gets a little bit samey samey, but when it comes to damage scaling, Gara is absolutely insane. Now, she's a bit harder to understand because Gara relies heavily on her melee weapon for her most common, most powerful build for high level content. Her melee weapon becomes a stat stick. You might have heard something like that in Warframe. And for the full guide on what's a stat stick and how to build Gara and so on and so forth, link the cards right now for full detailed guide on how to build a stat stick and how to build Gara Prime. Again, I highly recommend this frame, either Gara or Gara Prime, it doesn't really matter that much. Again, if you're newer to the game, there is only a slight difference between Prime frames and normal frames when it comes to the actual stats. Allow me to show you. Gara versus Gara Prime. Take a look at the lower right hand side of the screen. You see that? The Prime version has 40%, 40 more armor, not 40%, 40 more armor and 20 more health. It's not a huge deal. 
Now granted, it is something, simply because off of those numbers, our mods will work, you know, they get increased by a percentage, so therefore if the base is larger, the buff as a whole will be larger as well. You shouldn't feel bad about not having Prime Warframes. The normal ones will do the job just fine. Do not go out of your way necessarily to get the Prime variants. And the builds that apply to the Primes apply, apply to the normals and vice versa, of course. Gara, yet another frame that I highly recommend. Now for the next part, I'm gonna use my own experience in Warframe. Allow me to show you my stats because at the end of the day, you know what? Seeing is believing and Warframe is not... It's not a straight path. It's not a bullet leaving the chamber going straight. It's essentially your own way and how you want to make your experience and what do you like and what do you prefer. Allow me to show you my equipment stats and we're gonna sort by used. Let's go for Warframes first and foremost. My most played Warframe is Lady Mirage Prime. Now Mirage Prime... Mirage Prime... <sighs> is a weapon buffer frame that's at what she excels it's not the only thing that she's capable of and she's my most played but when it comes to buffing up the damage of your weapons there is nobody better if you want to get to crazy high numbers mirage prime is definitely 100 percent the way to go unfortunately with lady mirage there are a couple of disadvantages as well when it comes to survivability you know that high level content that we were talking about earlier She's mushy, squishy, and easy to kill. That's the honest truth. Now, it's not as bad as it used to be, but she's definitely not one of the most toughest Warframes in Warframe. So do bear that one in mind. Absolutely love this Warframe. And this is the build I'm using. It's not something I would recommend necessarily. But again, if you want to cater your experience after mine, go for something like this. Once again, we will be replacing all those fancy mods with normal versions. As you can see, Prime Continuity has a normal counterpart. In normal continuity and of course this one will have a lower drain as well ignore the arcanes for now if you don't have them you don't have them now let's talk about my comfort pick in warframe i love this warframe and he's not a very <sighs> this is what i'm what i was trying to say when you gotta cater your own way for warframe and your own experience my comfort pick is not a very popular choice he's called revenant 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 technically would be the correct pronunciation i think now this Warframe is a bit of a jack of all trades for the most part and he's got two very popular builds. Through the use of his 1 to 3 abilities, Revenant is capable of taking out super high level targets in a matter of seconds. Okay, it's a <laughs> realistic breeze for Revenant to actually take out high level targets. So essentially you enthrall and then you reef. One free, you go through them. It's absolutely sensational. Now it's not the build I prefer to play with Revenant, but that is recognized as being a meta build, even though I don't recognize a meta in Warframe per se. What I like to play into is Dance Macabre, his fourth ability that makes him essentially into a light show, a disco ball of sorts, a Beyblade if you will, a ballerina or whatever else you want to call him. Now a build such as this is very comfortable to use because you can use your free ability while you're using Dance Macabre and just go through all over the map. You can pick up energy orbs so you can replenish your energy and that's how you keep on spinning essentially forever. Now there's one problem with this build. <sighs> well, two problems actually. The biggest problem is the fact that it falls off around level 100, 120 enemies regardless of what type of enemies. Around level 100 to 120, this is simply not going to be powerful enough no matter how much you invested into your Revenant. As you can see, I kind of invested a lot and if you want the details on the build and why do you use that and not the other thing and why didn't you do this or that and etc etc link the cards right now it's the same build i've been using for years and i love this build could it be better mm, for me no for you maybe a couple of changes here and there that's it my friends time to talk about what i believe to be a very underappreciated warfare harold i love this guy this theoretically might be the new prime normally it should be nidus prime which we will talk about in just a second but it might also be harrow harrow is a support frame harrow is a sacrifice frame and i love his gameplay it's absolutely sensational he can save the entire team through the use of his portability and that is just absolutely nuts Convenant, you cast this one 
everybody gets invulnerability at the end of which depending on how much uh, theoretical damage you would have taken you get a critical chance buff that modifies its value if you go for a headshot or a body shot so it actually rewards skill play Harrow is also capable of replenishing energy which is fantastic adding crowd control and you know what the quest to get Harrow bellissima molto bene amazing absolutely bloody fantastic if you haven't done the chains of Harrow do the chains of Harrow now sensational love the lore uh, from this aspect and you know what that's what most of the community says you know what the lore in Warframe is fantastic how did you find it if you're a veteran and you're still watching by this point let me know in the comment section down below what is your favorite part to Warframe promise I'll read now that we're done with my most played Warframes there's still a couple that need pointing out honestly I should go for all of them but I'm just gonna um, outline the most powerful I'm gonna hate myself for doing this but Inaros allow me to explain I do not like this Warframe from what point of view he doesn't take anything to be amazing Inaros is a survivability frame Inaros is a goddamn nuclear tank Inaros is the frame you take when you want to sit and do nothing and just not die he is simply that powerful without much of a build He's that strong of a Warframe. I just feel like they missed an opportunity considering the background and the lore on Inaros to make him a bit more interactive. But if you want something that can just survive without you having to do anything and you can just chill and, I don't know, go grab a coffee or whatever else you want to do, sit on the toilet. Why not? We all do. Huh? And just text with your girlfriend and or whoever you do it with. You can just pick up Inaros and leave him there. Now, I urge you, my friends, if you're a new player coming into Warframe, please don't do this. If you're going public, if you're going with other players, it's a bit rude to bring Inaros. And that's just my two cents on the matter. It doesn't mean he's not one of the most powerful Warframes in Warframe, because he is. Let's talk about what is potentially the most powerful buffer support frame in Warframe. And there's a lot to look at. When it comes to Wisp, I love her. Honestly, I, 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 I'm not sure I can say a single bad thing about Wisp. She is subjectively beautiful looking. She is highly fashionable because, believe it or not, Fashion Frame is the true endgame of Warframe. And when it comes to buffs, nothing really beats Wisp from some uh, objective points of view. If you're the type that enjoys buffing your team if you're the type that likes to put down buffs hey guys i did this pick up this you'll have fire rate you'll have health you'll have everything you need then you want to try out wisp i highly highly recommend her her four ability isn't exactly the most useful for her kit but you can always replace that with the helmet system you don't know what the helmet system is ah that's a story for another time Click the cards right now for a bit more details on the helmet system so once again, if you're that type of player, make sure, make doubly sure, you take a look at Wisp. Again, when it comes to buffs, it's really hard to beat Wisp. Remember when I told you that no king rules forever? Let's talk about Wukong. Wukong was a joke frame. Wukong got made fun of by absolutely everybody. Almost every single player I came across told me, told me Wukong is bad, don't play him. Until the rework. When the rework hit, I think it was 2020 or 2019 when the rework hit for Wukong, he basically got transformed from one of the worst Warframes to one of the best. To pull it bluntly, there is very little that Wukong can't do. You got a survival mission? Wukong. You got a spy mission? Wukong. Sabotage? Wukong. Defense? Ha <laughs> ha! Wukong. There's a lot, again, there's, there's very little that Wukong cannot do. If you want an all-rounder Warframe, and you enjoy the mythos, the mythology of the Monkey King and all whatnot, and you think his abilities are flashy enough for you, and from my humble point of view, there definitely are, look no further than Wukong. <coughs> Please excuse me. I'm not gonna make, make a cut here, we're just gonna keep on going. I love this frame, and I do highly, highly recommend him. That said, there's one more Warframe which I really, really, really want to point out. Again, they're all special in their way, but I want to talk about Nidus. Now, Nidus, when it comes to damage, when it comes to scaling, when it comes to survivability, and even fashion, since Nidus is an absolutely amazing Warframe, much like Gara, when it comes to higher level playing with Nidus, he's got one problem. He gets very samey-samey. Essentially, what you do with a Nidus, there are two builds for Nidus. 
Uh, normally, I would recommend something like that. Again, you can amp it up even further. Natural Talent is definitely not the best of ideas, but this is a mod I'm simply very accustomed to playing with on a whole lot of Warframe, so I simply slap it on by reflex. What you do with Nidus, so you understand the basic gameplay uh, of the Warframe, you simply cast your larva, you clump up enemies together, and then you take them out using your one ability. And from time to time, you even put the, your Ravenous down and you press uh, uh, Parasitic Link an ally, an enemy, whatever you want, depending on the case. You're gonna get the crazy high stacks and the damage will be insane, the survivability will be insane. But Nidus is not for everybody. Again, this kind of playstyle can get samey samey and the whole icky vibey of the infested thing is not for just any player. I do highly, highly recommend Nidus, however. If you're after a Warframe that is a bit more quirky, gimmicky, a trickster, if you will, Warframe Limbo. Veterans are gonna hate me even for the fact that I actually mentioned Limbo. Limbo used to cause real problems. Limbo could destroy missions. It's not as bad anymore, definitely not. But if you wanna play the trickster, if you're trying to have something totally different to an avoid zone and then the normal one, then you need crowd control, it, it, you gotta go Limbo. Limbo is something that you need to try out. Everybody should try it out. You might love it, you might hate it. And from my experience and from the players I've met so far, it's either a love it or hate it experience. And you know what? The quest for Limbo, it's not bad too. I hope you do enjoy that one as well. Now, since we talked about Limbo, we need to talk about cloak frames. Ivara is considered the best. You will need a frame to do spy missions when you're a more fledgling channel. Later down the line you will see that you can do any spy mission with any Warframe. I got guides on all of them, simple, clear and to the point. But when you're newer in Warframe and you want to take your time with it and you don't want to be bugged and all whatnot and stressed, you gotta get yourself an Ivara. Ivara can stay cloaked forever, technically. You're not gonna need to stay cloaked forever, but if you want a comfort, Stealth Frame Ivara is definitely the way to go. And you know what? With her 4 ability, she's got an outstanding weapon. Absolutely balls to the walls, amazing. So she can pack a punch as well. There's one problem with Ivara, reason why I don't play her a whole lot. It's not that she doesn't look amazing. I mean, have a look at what I did for her. Fashion Frame, Endgame. Look at that. That's the premium skin, by the way. The problem with Ivara, from a subjective point of view, and this might just be me, she's not very fast. When it comes to cloaked frames, Loki is easier to get, the normal version of Loki that is, and he's a lot quicker. So if you can get over the fact that you don't need to be cloaked forever, and from time to time you need to recast your cloak, Loki is definitely the way to go. And he's also, also a bit of a trickster warframe, just like Limbo. He's also a frame that I'm forced to recommend. One problem with Loki though, outside of cloak and tricks, he doesn't do a whole lot. And you know what, to actually get the Warframe or buy him or farm him when he's unvaulted, make sure to farm him when he's unvaulted because the Loki systems, at least on PC, cost so goddamn much. And to be honest, it's not really all that Warframe. Mesa, oh boy. I couldn't, I couldn't not mention Mesa. Mesa or Mesa Prime. This is yet another outstanding Warframe, an area of effect. Essentially, she is a kick-ass gunslinger. You gotta love Mesa. She goes into her four and she essentially clears house with her pacemaker. She can also get buffs with shooting gallery and shatter shield guarantees her survivability even at higher levels of play. The problem with Mesa is, well, a couple actually. Ballistic Battery, her first ability, is kind of a dead ability. You can use the helmet system to replace this one with something a bit more useful. And other than that, I really can't fault Mesa. Yes, her pacemaker thing gets a little bit smaller quick and you need to recast it, but sometimes that's the fun of it, to see the animations and all whatnot, and there's an augment that helps with that as well. Allows Mesa to walk and the pacemaker reticule um, to last longer. I love this Warframe, again. It's just, just amazing. She's highly fashionable as well. Take a look. This is my favorite fashion for her. Love it. Absolutely insane. And here's a suggestion of a build. Once again, you can take out the Prime versions, use the normal version, and of course the Umbrals go the same. As you can see, I have Umbral Vitality here, but here's the normal version of Vitality. 
If you don't have the necessary endo to max out these mods, especially these high drain mods such as Vitality, my friends, leave two free from the top. It's fine. It's not gonna be much of a concern. So do bear that one in mind. Here's another frame which I need to mention, I have to mention, and I don't really like, and I'll explain why. This is a fan favorite Warframe too, so people are gonna start chucking rocks at me. Saren. Now there's one really nice thing about Saren. She's an amazing area of effect Warframe when it comes to AoE power. And not just AoE power, not just pure destruction of everything that's around you, but easy mode, absolute destruction of everything that's around you, then you gotta go Saren. She is, without a doubt, the AoE queen of Warframe. Now my problem with Saren is the fact that she's too good, too easy to play. All you gotta do is spread your spore. You place your one on a target, you kill it, and then it's gonna spread from target to target. If you're ever in trouble, you can press Molt, and if you wanna add to the nuke, you simply press your four ability, Miasma. Toxic Lash, believe it or not, there's a whole build made around this one. It's not really necessary. This is usually my go-to for taking out when using the helmet system. But honestly, Saren, all her abilities are useful. It's just that she's so easy and so powerful. Your spores are gonna jump from target to target when they die. The stacks are gonna keep racking up until they absolutely destroy and annihilate everything. It's gonna be easy to be on the top when it comes to damage meters, if that's your cup of tea. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to nerf Saren. The Warframe community hates anything nerf, okay? So don't nerf anything, Saren is fine as she is. You gotta have Saren in your arsenal, my friends. If you want AoE goodness, go for this one. Do you remember when I said that Vault can go fast, but there's one Warframe that can go even faster? In more recent times, the Warframe that, from my point of view, has been most successful has to be Gauss. This, I, I love this frame. Everything about this frame is amazing from a subjective point of view, and if your fantasy is to go fast, as fast as you possibly can, then go with Gauss. It will fit the bill quite nicely. You know what? The survivability is good on Gauss, the uh, damage is good on Gauss, and the whole theme of the Warframe just screams amazing. I love this one. And I do highly recommend it. A close second in more recent times would be Protea. Protea is a more, more supporty like Warframe. Her best ability has to be Dispensary. And I think, my friends, that's pretty much it for today. Again, all the Warframes have something special. And I didn't go through all of them because there is no need. For example, a lot of players don't like Atlas. They say he's bad. It's a bad Warframe. I like Atlas. Do you like punching stuff? Do you like One Punch Man? Then you gotta play yourself some Atlas. Just like you can say something not bad necessarily, negative about a Warframe, there's always something good as well. Oh my god, Oberon. You, I, I, you see, that's the thing, you can't mention support frames without talking about the mm, druid of Warframe. This is an absolutely outstanding support frame, and if you're that kind of player, you gotta have them in your collection. My friends, I do believe that's pretty much it. Hopefully you draw some nice information from this vid. If there's anything more that I can help you with, by all intents and purposes, let me know in the comment section down below. My advice to you? Heart to heart, player to player, not content creator to viewer. Enjoy your time in Warframe and whatever you do, don't rush it because there is no real end game. And once you get to the end, well, <laughs> you get to sit with the rest of us in the Orbiter. And trust me, it's not as fun as going through the entire game. As always, my name is Malazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And if you got any sorts of feedback for me, by all means, drop it in the comment section down below. Until next time, my friends, Pendulum Narata, end game content. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!